so yeah we will start the session now first of all i would like to introduce myself uh, this is ram and i have 17 years of experience uh, 17 plus years of experience and in various organizations and uh, from last seven years i am in the data science and machine learning big data field and the hot and all certified professional for the hadoop environment and also it is a part of the data science and uh, <clears throat> you may have some doubt about the data science machine learning and big data hadoop like that so all these are comes under same umbrella that is the data science in the under the data science only there is the machine learning there is the big data and all other sub supporting concepts <clears throat> okay so the teaching is my passion so because of that reason i'm taking these sessions uh, so uh, uh anybody of you know uh python please send me the message how many of you know python do you know python or not a little bit yes no little bit only data type okay 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 <clears throat> yeah and not an issue yeah okay uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, database concepts database any database mysql uh, oracle or anything okay good <clears throat> so i think most of you are having the experience on knowledge on databases okay we're fine uh, and then how many of you have the experience on any programming language either c++ or java java how many of you have java okay good java okay fine So, okay, most of you know some programming concept and also the DBM methods. Now we can continue. No, there is no problem. <clears throat> so, now uh, you you are uh, you are here to learn about the data science. First of all, we should know what is the data science. What is the need for the data science, and then. Uh, I will show you some uh, I will show you one program in the data science or machine learning Okay, and I will tell you what is the concept to be covered here. Okay, I will tell you that. So let us go through this Actually, I will show some slides only today. Okay, I will show some slides and I will go uh, I will give some brief description about the data science and machine learning and all and then uh, we will continue in the regular sessions Okay, now let us continue now here uh, the session is planned for uh, explaining what, why data science definition of the data science and then i will let you know what is the who is the data sciences data science data engineer data scientist data engineer and analyst and also who is the data scientist and what are the skill set uh, required and then uh, uh, i will let you know what are uh, uh, I, I will let you know some components of the data science and then we will continue Okay, now let us see here. First of all, we will go with the why data science. See here, huge amount of data is generated from number of decades. Uh, I think it is three to four decades. From last three to four decades, lot of data is generated. Most of the data is in the databases because that is the database era. Okay, nowadays it is not the database. See, WhatsApp messages, Facebook messages, social media social media is uh, has taken the important place for generation of the data 
so so much of data is generated now what are the day who are the data generators websites smartphones stock markets and all these are the data generators so how can we handle this data so uh, what can we do with this data that is the main concept here so lots of hidden information is available in that uh, data um, how we can say this that is practically it was proved uh, uh, some uh, some attack also uh, some attackers they use the uh, social media for commu for their com <coughs> communication so if you are able to analyze that data if you are able to analyze <laughs> the uh, messages sent through the social media then you can easily identify whether there is a uh, there is an attack is going to happen or anything is unnecessary thing is going to happen or not we can easily predict that so for all these things we have to find all this is the hidden information okay so uh, that hidden information how can we find that hidden information it is very difficult okay and analysis is required on the data to find these hidden facts what are those hidden facts if you want to identify then we have to go through the hidden facts so we have to analyze the data let us say for example stock market in the next month this particular company shares will be increased a lot how we can say that that is because of analysis of the previous data and we can predict the next level future okay now the another important point is the data may be in the structured format semi-structured format or unstructured format what is this structure means database semi-structured means it may be the xml files html files or any others and if you want to go with that unstructured meaning that flat files you may think that if you are maybe very good in the dbms you may think that why should we use the flat files because very powerful dbms is available why should we go for this flat files flat files means again file processing system and uh, uh, file based systems they are having a lot of problems already we learned at the time of dbms the disadvantage of the file system and advantages of the dbms after that uh, we it continued with the database but flat file system it is giving the very good performance <coughs> compared to databases in some situations if the data is huge then it is better to go for the uh, uh, flat files and unstructured data what is unstructured data unstructured data means it is the text for example there is a message if you want to analyze the message and if you want to find the summary of that message then you have to it, that is called the unstructured form meaning that you can imagine what is where what is our chat language chat language is completely different compared to the letter letter writing language so how can we analyze the chat language that is very difficult so there is unstructured data actually in structured data we can analyze but unstructured data we cannot analyze easily it, it we should have some other tools okay and it is difficult to analyze the structured data with unstructured data this is also a very difficult task and analysis of the real time data is the challenging task real time continuous data facebook in in the whatsapp if you get one message immediately it has to analyze the data so how can we analyze that data and big data is another challenging task analysis of the big data very large amounts of data and companies like yahoo facebook google linkedin cloudera uh, Hotel works all these they have already started working on the data science and they improved their product values very well by using the data science right yeah are you able to understand am i with you please respond yes Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Sound is low. Is it for everyone? Okay. I think you have to verify in your uh, uh, speaker volume. Uh, please verify the speaker volume. And adjust the headphones so that you can get the sound properly. Yeah. 
so let us continue let us continue with that so here in the data science what is the data science in a very simple way see here there is lots of data in different formats see here this is the different format different types of files see here there is the archive file there is a database file there is the archive file there is the web interface in that the cloud the maybe the unstructured data like the newspapers current affairs and the data may be in the uh, excel format it may be the pdf format or document format or it may be in the excel format csv format html format xml format and there is a lot of social media available that social media is growing exponentially with the streaming environment and uh, government rules are also uh, uh, generating the data so all these are the sources of the data so all these sources so how can we analyze this much of data it is very difficult so how can we do that that is we can put the data science simply and the data science it will just take the data and it just produces the data product what is the data product the data product is the it is simply a product that again you have to process if you want that is the data product can be consumed directly or the data product can be converted into another format and then it can be used so this is a simple way of data science so the data science is analyzing the data and it produces some data product that data product can be used uh, uh, as required by the organization or the particular requirement okay so this is the data science in a very very simple way is that okay for you all yeah please respond others <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I will repeat. Wait, wait. So here, there is lots of data available. The data may be available in different formats from different sources, and that data can be any data can be taken by data science. And the data science it will just produce the data product. The data product, if you want, you can consume it directly, and that. data otherwise that data product can be converted into another forms and you can use it it is like uh, that's that's why i have shown that data science is cow and the cow can uh, take any type of data any type of uh, grass or anything and then that will be that will produce the data product like milk the milk can be consumed directly or it can be converted into various things not the middleman why why we are talking here about the middleman no no it is just taking the data and produce the data product and data product can be consumed in different ways that's it we cannot say that it is a middleman only that can be directly used right yeah i think it is clear for everyone any doubt here do you have any doubts in this yeah yeah so let us take the, let us see the formal definition the definition of the data there are so many definitions for the data science but i am giving you the common definition and most popular definition there are number of sources available and they are maybe in their different formats and all these are the data sources the data sources may be in the structure or it may be the unstructured or it may be in the semi structured and it might be useful or irrelevant also for a particular purpose we don't know because we have so much of data 
let us say for example if we have the data of the uh, sportsman student employee uh, corporate uh, person and businessman and if you are working with the hospital management then whatever the data you have that may be useless so it may be irrelevant to your data and if you are working on the uh, uh, college environments or the about the student information system then student data is useful sportsman data it is not useful and uh, other data may be not useful so meaning that the data may be irrelevant for a particular purpose and it may be in the structured semi structured or unstructured format and what the decision maker has to do the decision maker has to has to take the entire data whatever it is the data produced that has to be taken and he has to take the decision there is a management and now the data science whenever you put the data science what is the data science it is the art of turning the data into actions it is the art of turning the data into action meaning that it will take the data and it will produces the data product and what is the data product that is the actionable information meaning that immediately we can take the decision based on this actionable information this is remember that the data product just provides the information actionable information but which action has to be taken that will be taken care by the decision maker only now the decision maker he will directly use the data product and he will take the decision based on that so the data the decision maker work has been simplified and the examples there are several examples and before examples there is the formal definition data science is an art of turning data into actions by producing the data product this is a formal definition and then the examples recommendations amazon if you open the amazon there, is, there are so many recommendations if you open the amazon you will get the recommended items you these items you may like and if you open the book my show <coughs> it will show you the recommended movies yeah based on your past experience based on your past uh, purchases and all it will give you some suggestions and facebook uh facebook suggestions linkedin suggestions this person you may know but they may not be related to directly to you but they will analyze based on the similar properties and they may give you the recommendation recommendation yes recommendation system this is also one component of the data product <coughs> now this is the definition of the data science now about the data science the data science is the combination of different uh, different fields there is mathematics statistics machine learning inside the machine learning there is a deep learning and then domain expertise data visualization communication and computer science now the domain expertise that statistics mathematics data visualization computer science these comes under the computer science comes with the big data concept also so one part is the big data for data science okay and domain expertise mathematics you have you most of the machine learning algorithms are designed based on the mathematics only mathematics and statistics so these are the core concepts and computer science to speed up the process and domain expertise on which domain you are working for example if you are working on the hospital management when the hospital is your domain okay communication there should be the communication okay and visualization you have to visualize the data visualize the results reports and all so all these are the comes under the, this thing and then now machine learning it is playing the important role in the data science and inside the machine learning there is the uh, uh, there is a deep learning concept okay and now uh, so this is about the various this, these are the about, these are the components which are required for the data science okay now what is what is the importance of other topics that we will learn slowly actually in that if you want to learn the data science there are two ways one is data scientist second one is database application developer sorry data science application developer the data scientist if you want to become the completely the data scientist then your approach should be different you have to do the data science master's degree bachelor's degree or master's degree in data science 
that is for to become the data scientist completely okay and if you want to become the data science application developer if you want to develop some applications on data science then you need not know all these concepts if you know computer science and machine learning algorithms and how to utilize them then that is enough so there is a uh, uh, these are the two ways to learn our approach is here since it is an institute and it is uh, it is for the fast learning environment we are going through the practical oriented it is not about the theory oriented it is a practical oriented we will make you execute we will execute and we will make you execute so there is a practical environment so we are making you as the data science application developers okay so and if you want to become the really data scientist the uh, short period of time is not possible you you should have you have to spend minimum two to three years of two to three years on data science completely minimum three years is minimum and then how much you can spend you can spend but there is no end for this okay now so here the scope of the data science it is measureless manufacturing healthcare finance biotechnology uh, education telecom sports transport everything so many are there okay now tell me do you have any doubts do you have any doubts so far Yeah, please respond so that I will get the speed. Okay. I can understand that. Okay. You are able to follow so that I can go a little bit fast. That will be covered in the coming slides surrender yeah i think no doubt still now yeah now now i think most of you know who is the data engineer he is in the upper level of the programmers or some others so the data engineer he is in the higher position right so what are the skills required for the data engineer here data management should be familiar by the data engineer and data warehouse big data database handling file handling programming data visualization everything all these are the required skills for the data engineer okay and the tools can be used that is like hadoop oracle mysql and so many are there i mentioned only three but so many are there these are the required skills now another okay and then the next level is the data analyst he is also having the similar level uh, over the data engineer uh, and he should have some other skills that is the programming the data visualization should be there and uh, directive reasoning should be there and uh, use the existing tools and algorithms he should be able to do that and statistics he should have the statistical concepts now this is a data science level meaning that all the data analyst environment and some uh, half part of the data engineer concept so that he can become the data scientist and so many other concepts are also there okay by using this course by using this course we are where we will be if you complete this course we will be in this region and some part from here also this is our region 
course reasoning and data scientist he should have the inductive reasoning inductive reasoning means with experience he has to design the theory okay and then undirected research you don't have the goal if you are the software engineer you will have the goal the client will give you the goal or management will give you the goal but as a data scientist or data science applications there will not be any goal undirectedly you have to start the project start the research and then you have to find what is the problem and then find the solution and then design the thesis he should be able to design the thesis and he should be able to use the multiple resources like big data uh, web interfaces and all and he should find the problems and also solutions and these are the various components required or tools required for the data science or data scientist or data analyst for anyone okay so python is a very popular language right and nowadays it, is, it has become the universal language like java so java era is slowly going down and python era was started okay and then r r is also another powerful language like python and spark it is related to the big data environment and mongodb it is also the distributed environment there is no sql concept these are these are the some of the tools required for the data science data scientist okay so and then now this is the machine learning where is the machine learning the machine learning is playing the important role for the data analyst and the data scientist and other than this machine learning there is some there are some other concepts for the data scientist what are they hadoop is also one of the part it is playing important role okay so these are about the data engineer data analyst and data scientist do you have any doubts now please respond for the class conducted till now please give the response yeah no doubts others i'm getting the i'm getting the response from only one or two uh, participants no doubts uh, scala is also part of this but not for the machine learning it is not very good for the machine learning scala spark means spark is designed based on scala only the background for spark actually i mentioned only some tools not all tools these are the important tools that's it i did not mention the db2 also for the data engineer yeah, any more comment this course doesn't cover all the topics each and every topic will take one month minimum okay so it is not possible to cover all what i am going to cover also i will let you know at the end of the session okay okay then let us move yeah i think i don't want to go with the data scientist and other uh, things okay ah yeah i want to tell this about this see here the data scientist should have the two types of fact two types of qualities one is the intangible x factors and the tangible technical skills intangible x factors are very important for the data scientist curiosity should be there you cannot learn from anywhere you have to build on your own curiosity creativity and focus these three you have to build on your own and technical tangible skills meaning that you can learn somewhere see you are now you are learning the technical stuff that is uh there are several things mathematics or statistics computer science or domain expertise 
by using all these things you can learn all of them so these are the two types of factors required curiosity if you don't have the curiosity creativity focus then there is no use you should have the patience more patience is required for data scientists right these are the tool kit. this is the toolkit for hadoop or uh, sorry data science or machine learning experts so java r python any one of them hadoop hdfs map reduce these are the hadoop related hbsp guy these are also hadoop etl and sql and all okay uh, and then wake up scipy numpy scikit-learn pandas okay uh, so d3js uh, gp and uh, ggplot to add uh, sas and all these are the various components or com tools required for the data science at least some of the tools if you know some of the tools that is enough okay and okay i don't want to discuss about the data science team and uh, requirements and all the steps also i don't want to mention all this at this moment i will explain in the regular class <coughs> okay now see this this is important slide for data science there are two eyes there is machine learning and deep learning and the nose there is a oxygen there is a big data okay and visualization it is also another important tool to express what is the data what is the, what are the reports and everything visualization so without machine learning or deep learning there is no data science without big data there is no anything meaning that you should have both of them now our course what is the scope of our course i think you have now you got the clarity on the data science machine learning deep learning and big data and visualization am i correct did you get the idea about all of them actually the main problem is the confusion of between these things actually data science machine learning deep learning what should we learn where should we start uh, uh, in some textbooks also it is completely different from other no all these are similar but related they're different but related comes under data science umbrella Did you get the clarity on this? Please let me know. You can continue. AI is the in AI data science is the intersection. Intersection of AI with some other topics. And it is not completely the AI. AI concept is there. One some part of A is the machine learning. That machine learning is the part of the data science. Machine learning is part of the machine. Uh, machine learning is the part of the A. The same machine learning is part of the data science also. So the common factor is this one. Got it? AI deals with only algorithms. Of course, there are so much of scope. Okay, and some part will be the machine learning. Yes, machine learning is important. Yes, that's what I'm telling. Based on machine learning, there will be the deep learning and so on. Now let us see our course. First, what we will do is most of you don't know the python also very well so we'll start with python in python we will deal with the basic concepts of the python and then we will start with the numpy pandas these are the advanced libraries for handling the data okay after that we will start with the machine learning concepts to implement the machine learning concepts we will use the scikit-learn library scikit-learn library and for that we will use the ide there are several ides we will use like jupyter notebook spider anaconda and all these are the various various ides we will use and what we are going to cover more is actually it was not mentioned here and along with this inside the machine learning we will deal with 
deep learning also. In deep learning, we will use the TensorFlow and Keras. Now what we will cover that is of course basic python and then yeah so of course we will cover with the basic python and then numpy and then pandas and then descriptive statistics we will cover and getting data how to get the data and pre-processing of the data we will cover and model fitting and then regression in the regression linear polynomial gradient descent will be covered and then classification and logistic regression decision trees will be covered random forest and also we will cover with the deep learning concepts those deep learning concepts it was not mentioned in this syllabus and that the detailed uh, syllabus will be uh, sent to you okay you will get the detailed syllabus okay now i will show you some uh, execution environments okay so here we are going with this yeah uh, i think we can go with yeah. actually we will use the kaggle kernel also we, i will make you execute the programs in the kaggle kernel and google uh, collab okay so i will show you some uh, projects see here uh, uh yeah i will show you one concept i think it is better to show this yes <clears throat> actually i'm just showing i'm not explaining this okay uh, so this is given to the previous batch solar radiation prediction that we are doing so what will we what will we do and that is we will have the data set how the data set will be taken and how can we write the code i will explain each and every line of the code and i will i will execute in front of you only i will type and execute everything and you will get the knowledge on that so here this is the code for taking the data actually we have the solar radiation radiation how much radiation is there based on several factors so that we have to identify so i'm just reading the data actually the data is given by the kaggle and some uh, someone has donated this data to the kaggle and we are using that data and the data is loaded into our python environment this is the python code okay and this is the data available see here uh, this is the unix time meaning the system time and then date time available and radiation how much radiation is there at that in the date and the time and at that time what is the temperature and what is the pressure and what is the humidity what is the wind direction what is the speed of the wind and uh, 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 time of sunrise time of sunset so many things are available codes so many columns are available so you have to analyze all those columns and then we have to find what is the what we can do that is we can do with first we will see what are the columns available we have to understand what are the columns first i'm just displaying the columns and then what are the data types for all those columns we will see that data all the data types for each and every column for the data and then we will we will filter some uh, we will filter some data meaning that which is required which data is required i will take that data only and then See here i'm taking only radiation i want to predict the radiation for that based on the several factors so here my factors are the temperature pressure humidity wind direction speed and all i want to predict the radiation what is the radiation on that for the particular temperature so after that we have to pre-process the data we have to verify whether there are null values or not for that this is the command so we have to we will see that there are no null values all these are the no null values all zeros means no null values 
and then we have to verify the data how it was given how it was organized the data whether it is in the normal distribution or in semi in any other format we have to verify that we will cover actually okay and then we will plot the data so that visualization will be very easy so we can easily understand what is the data so see here this is a box plot by using the box plot there are some extreme values we can identify that and then we will go with the some other concept so and then i'm just displaying the i'm just executing the box plot i'm just plotting the box plot for all uh, columns so we will understand what is the data first of all after understanding what is the data then we will go with the correlation how related these field so we have to identify the correlation these are these, these are the correlations between the columns so we have to find the highest correlation which is having the highest correlation and the radiation radiation is our target in this project so this is a this is a project actually okay for that for that what are the correlations actually correlation temperature is having very good correlation with uh, this so i want to scatter plot i want to plot the graph so that i can understand what is the relation see here if you increase the temperature the radiation may be also increased see here this is the, the that we will can understand with this graph and then scatter plot between others also we have to analyze this so this is there is some other relation with this there is some other relation with this and there is some other relation with this okay yes you can show this but not this level you have to increase the level for the projects this is a simple project okay and then go with this so all these are the various values after that i have to divide the predictor and target so for that we have the code and the predictor data is like that and all and we have to divide the data into training and testing to train the model we have to train the model and then we have to get the outputs for the new data so for that we have to divide that after that we have to fit the model this is the model fitting after fitting the model we have to predict we have to predict the data after that this red color line this is our prediction the blue color dots they are the original data our predictions are like this and this is not very good so we have to go with some other level so we will go with the some other level that is by using the another regression model actually this is a regression okay what is the regression why can we use this all we will uh, discuss later okay so here and then i'm using the same code for a, a, another type of regression another type of method to find the solution so see here i'm going with the polynomial regression and for the polynomial regression i will explain this code entire code okay so don't worry so for that with the polynomial regression how it is going is see instead of that it is very better way see here it is very close to the original data the blue color are the original data this is a predicted values these are the predicted values so predicted values these are closer than the previous one the previous one it is little bit far away from the fact but here it is very close right so in this way we can find the errors also in that and then we can find we can display the errors and then we can go with the, some other uh, type of techniques so all these are possible okay so all these are things i am executing now actually see you can observe i am executing okay so like this there are so many things are available okay so uh, we will uh, i will teach you how to use this environment how to write the program and all also i will explain you okay and in the same way there is another format another uh, 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 example is also there that we will this what i am doing now uh, surendra i am showing one more project like the image analysis we will do the image analysis also image project also so this is a image analysis chest x ray by seeing the x ray whether he is affected infected with the pneumonia or not we will identify so this is the project we will get the chest x ray images 
I'll show you that also. I have to go with the data sets. Data sets that chest x ray. This is the for pneumonia. This is the data set available. In this, we will get the number of uh, x ray images. So these are the normal x ray images. Okay. And uh, this is the pneumonia infected images. So, based on this, we have to train the machine to identify whether there is a pneumonia or not for the particular x ray given. So, if we take our x ray and give it to the machine after training, after getting trained by using this data, it will tell that whether we have the pneumonia or not. Okay. So, that is the uh, project. Okay. So, for that, we have written some code. Actually, it will take some time for execution. Okay. <coughs> I can execute, I will execute, but it will take some time. Okay. So, this is reading the all the images and training and testing. Actually, we have not completed this. So, that's why it is giving the error. Oh, I think I have to execute this. Okay. After this, after that, I have to execute this. After that, I have to execute this. Uh, yeah, okay. So after that, I have to execute this next, next, like that. We have to execute so many things here, yeah. okay? Okay, so after this, so we have to execute this. We have built the model after building the model, okay? For that, the compile, we have to compile that model, okay? After that, fit, we have to fit the model. It will take so much of time, actually, okay? So of course, there are some techniques available. I will show you those techniques also. So it will take a lot of time. So 100 epochs will be generated. Uh, so see the accuracy. Every time we are, we are getting the accuracy is improving. See, initially the accuracy is 0 0.51 means 51%. After that, accuracy. After that, it is it has become 50 Yeah, are you able to see the screen now? Okay, still it is executing, okay? See, slowly it is improving the accuracy. See, 90%, 91%. Slowly it is increasing the accuracy finally we are getting 99 percent 99 percent of accuracy for chest x-ray only 98 percent 98 99 percent like that it will be there okay number of epochs 100 percent accuracy is also there but 100 percent we cannot believe completely because sometimes it may give but 100 percent is very difficult okay so all these are the things what we have done. So after that, we have to predict the model. Uh, we have to predict for the new images and we can do that. 100% it is not possible in the data science. Sometimes it may happen, but we will call it as the overfitting. Okay, we will call it as the overfitting. If the accuracy is very low, then we will call it as the underfitting.
okay are you getting i think it is good for you for i have shown you some theory theoretical stuff i have given some theoretical stuff i have given some practical stuff also i have shown you some practical stuff also and for our class we will create one google classroom you have to communicate with the google classroom okay you please communicate with the google classroom in that i we will provide you some code for that each and every exercise will be one project that is your wish meaning that i will give you some projects like five to six projects i can give after that you have to do so many projects you can ask the doubts for those projects also okay and related uh, assignments will be given in the google classroom and all the material and the related stuff will be shared in the google classroom okay once if you get registered we will get we, you will get everything okay so material assignments and all you will get ppts and all yeah google classroom i will let you know okay it is a communication media it is like a portal you can say that it is a portal we will share the material and everything in that okay yeah currently working on yeah one minute yeah one minute one minute so many queries are there one minute i'm seeing that currently working as a network programmer okay i wanted to switch to data science yes good option sandeep duration of the course it is uh, it is designed for 5 to 6 weeks 5 to 6 weeks okay but understanding is important for me uh, is software is software used to develop code other open source we will use open source no need of purchasing we will use open source only python is everything is open source here okay how long is the course weekday classes only five days class duration is five to six weeks okay any more doubts please class timing will be nine to ten nine to ten one hour class jobs uh, so much of so many jobs are there in data science right now okay uh, good in my microsoft sql not aware about the other tools no problem you can continue if you know sql you can continue no problem total duration 40 hours no no it is not about the hours i'm not counting the hours i'm just i will just count the student performance that's it whether it is uh, six weeks or seven weeks also i don't mind student satisfaction is important for me database is okay good for lecturers there are no openings in the organizations i guess okay you have to try in different way i don't want to say that fee and all you have to talk about that in uh, the uh, institute yeah okay no problem uh surendra i am telling you time is not important for me you have to learn after learning only i will leave you don't worry business intelligence okay fine yes 
this is very good chance uh pradhan okay very good chance to switch to data science good time also weekday classes currently doing lectureship i want to switch to data science okay you can shift actually these projects if you win uh, if you participate in any competition in the same uh, kaggle then you can put them in the uh, as the projects sandeep no problem mathematics knowledge it is one option only if you want to become the data scientist you should have the mathematics if you want to become the data science application developer you don't need it. data science versus software engineer these are similar but the data science i don't understand we should not combine these two data data science and software engineer see even if you want to do the data science project the software engineer only will do they are not dependent any more doubts please i'm waiting for your doubts otherwise we can wind up the session yeah if you don't have the doubts i will ask how is the session yeah recorded sessions will be provided if you miss the session Recorded session will be provided. See you how to ask in the institute. I'm not concerned with that. Please give the feedback on this demo. I'm expecting the demo uh, feedback. <clears throat> thank you please give the feedback good or bad anything okay Okay. Please give. Yeah. Okay, the regular class will be started from I think Monday onwards. Okay, but tomorrow also there will be one more demo. So if you want, you can also attend for that. I don't have we don't have any problem. You can attend for the tomorrow's demo also. Tomorrow I will explain in different way again. That is completely different. Some topics will be there, but it will be different okay course is not enough you have to practice more without practice even if you have done the course anywhere it is useless Yeah, then you will get definitely Surendra. Okay, then uh, we can conclude our session for today. Okay, we will start on time and we will close on time. Yeah, thank you. If you have any doubts, you can contact them. They will guide you. Thank you. <clears throat>